Hi everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com where I write about food from scratch, our handmade home, and our simple farmhouse lifestyle here on Boone Street. And today I wanna to talk about an excellent Christmas gift that you can make yourself that's super simple or as a housewarming gift any time of the year, and that is how to make homemade beeswax candles. I have a post on my blog about making beeswax candles that I posted quite a while ago, and I've had a lot of requests for a video on how to make them because I have them included in my Christmas gift basket idea that you can hand make everything in the basket video, and I have a video on how to make the other components, which is the sugar scrub and the vanilla, but I've never made a video on how to make the beeswax candles. So. I wanna show you today just how simple that really is because it isn't difficult at all. The supplies you'll need, and I'm gonna link all of this in the description box below so that you can get your hands on them, but a lot of these are things you'll already have around your house. You don't actually need a lot. So the one thing you're gonna to have to buy is probably wicks, unless you have wicks around your house, and some beeswax, which I like to buy them in these little pellets, and that is because they melt more easily. Coconut oil, which I don't know about you, but this is always in my house, so that's not difficult. I like to add cocoa butter to mine. So today I'm gonna make lavender cocoa smelling beeswax candles. But you can get creative and experiment around with this. So if you want a candle that's more relaxing, you might go for the lavender cocoa like me. You might do a beeswax and citrus. You might just do plain beeswax with no added scents. So today I am gonna use some lavender essential oil and cocoa butter to give mine the scent, but you don't have to do that. The main things you need for this is a pound of beeswax and a half cup of oil. And so what you do, which is so simple, is you melt these ingredients in a double broiler, which I don't have a double broiler, so I always put things in a glass bowl and then just set them on top of a boiling pot of water. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I'm just gonna pour this in. And like I said, I'm gonna add cocoa butter to mine for extra good scent because I don't know if you've ever tried cocoa butter, which we've used it to eat, like to make chocolate, and then also for making candles and for making body butters, which are very nourishing for the skin. But it smells insanely good. It smells like a big old chocolate bar, so it smells delicious. Okay, so I actually just dug this cocoa butter out of my pantry because I do use it to make chocolate, but you can use it for a lot of other applications. One of them is candle making. I also like to make a diaper cream for babies and a sunscreen. So I'll probably get videos like that out when the baby comes for the diaper cream and probably closer to next summer for the sunscreen. But cocoa butter is so versatile. What I like about the ingredients in this is if you're gonna start making your own home products, you think, ugh, I have to buy all this stuff and then it's just gonna sit up in my cabinet, I'm never gonna use it, and then you have all this leftover stuff. By that point, you might as well just have bought the candles. But the same basic ingredients, so like shea butter, coconut oil, cocoa butter, and beeswax, they can be used to make lip balm, which I have a tutorial for on the blog, body butter, diaper cream, sunscreen, candles. So if you have those same four-ish basic ingredients, maybe some essential oils for scents, you really will use them all because you can use them for so many different things. So I have about a half cup of coconut oil here. And I'm just gonna put it in with my beeswax. I'm telling you there's no real science to this. I might add a little bit more. The recipe on my blog says half cup coconut oil, pound beeswax. But like I said, I like to experiment with things. I'm totally fine throwing some cocoa butter in here. And brought to a boil some water here to be my double broiler. I'm probably not gonna actually be able to take it off the stove to show you this whole thing because the water is gonna get cold really quickly. But I'm just gonna sit it on my stove like this with the water boiling, so probably on about medium, so the water below in this pot's boiling. And I'm gonna stir it until this is all melted and incorporated together, all liquid, because everything in this turns liquid when heated. Now you don't wanna put it straight in a pan because it could burn, but this way of doing the double broiler where the water below heats it, 
doesn't allow that to happen. While that is getting nice and melted, I'm gonna go over occasionally and stir it. I wanna tell you about how we're gonna attach the wicks. So the first time I made candles on my blog, I went out and bought a bunch of matching little jars and I made them all nice, but this time, I just went around my kitchen and kind of scavenged what I could. I had this little weck jar, which just has these little things on the side. I think it's a really cute little canning jar and I found that at World Market. I had this little canning style flip top jar that I found at Home Goods with salt in it. And I needed the salt and then I figured, you know, this would make a really cute jar for like a homemade sugar scrub or a candle. So I'm gonna use that today to make a candle. Then I had another just random jar up in my cabinet. So these will all make beautiful candles on their own. You could also use like a small antique crock or something you find at a thrift shop that looks like a neat little thing but you think, what am I gonna do with that? You can make a little candle with it or even a large candle with it. You can make a really big candle, maybe one for your coffee table that you put several wicks in, you could do that too. That is what is so fun about making things in your own home is you can personalize them and get creative. So you could make one that has a really invigorating scent, one that's really relaxing, one in an antique jar, anything you can think of, a mason jar, just whatever your style is, you could make a candle in it. And so that is what is so fun about making your own candles. So to attach the wick is very simple. You're just gonna take a little dab of hot glue and try to center it as much as possible. And then you're just gonna put the wick right on the hot glue. I actually already have this one done from last time I made candles. I guess I didn't have enough wax to complete this one. So it's just got a wick in the middle here. You wanna center it as much as possible, but it's okay if it's a little off. And I'm gonna fill this one today if I have enough wax to make all this happen. So let me show you how we put the wicks on. Now the key to keeping the wicks straight while you're pouring in your beeswax, cocoa butter, and coconut oil is to use some kind of skewer to wrap the wick around. So I had skewers last time, I only have a couple left. So this time I improvised and used pencils, which works just fine. And you just wanna put it on top of your jar, wrap the wick around it, and then let it sit and try to get it straight while you're pouring in your wax. On this next step, I'm gonna have to work really, really quickly because the beeswax and the cocoa butter want to harden up pretty much instantly, even as you're pouring it. So what I like to do is keep one pouring type of measuring cup and I will put a little bit in it, pour it into the candles, and then a little bit's gonna harden on it, which I'm gonna just have to throw it into about a 200 degree oven to melt it again. So that way you don't have too many dishes that are getting that hard beeswax on them, but you have to work quickly. So I'm gonna add about 10 drops of lavender essential oil, and then I am going to rapidly pour these in. As I told you, it hardens really quickly. So this is what I'm left with after pouring all my candles. I'm left with this, which is kind of a mess. So what I'm gonna do is put this in my oven on a low temperature. This is all gonna melt and I'm gonna be able to pour the rest of it into my candles. Now after the wax hardens fully, I'm going to trim the wick to about a half inch above the wax. And then that's it, they're done. So basically it was melt the wax, attach the wick, wrap the wick around something to keep it straight and pour the wax in. <laughs> Add essential oils if you want. That is all there is to this candle making thing. You can get creative with it, add different scents, put it in different jars. It's a really fun project and it's so simple. Check out the blog farmhouseonboon.com for more details on these ideas. 
It'll all be linked in the description below along with the sources for the beeswax and the wicks. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time stopping by the farmhouse, please hit that subscribe button. I come on here at least once or twice a week to share with you food from scratch, a handmade home, and our simple farmhouse lifestyle here on Boone Street. Thank you so much for stopping by. Mm -hmm.